Hmm. I remember I was at Fox News once because I was shooting a, a, a sketch with uh, a Greg, um, uh, what's his name? He's Geraldo? Not, no, no, Greg, uh, the, the Fox News, he's got a t- funny talk show. Gutfeld. Gutfeld. He, this was when he was just sort of, he, he was, didn't have the Gutfeld show. I Red shot, Eye. It, it, yeah, yes, I think it was Red, Red Eye, Eye. But we, yeah. they, he let us shoot a thing where he, it was a sketch for my show. It was like a, a scene for my show where um, I'm, I'm a, debating with a woman who's against m- masturbation and I'm, I'm the guy on pro masturbation. And he was the moderator and we had this like TV news thing. It was a silly episode of my show. And uh, anyway, so I got to go the, to the studios to shoot it and Gutfeld was really cool. I like him. He's a good guy. He's a nice guy. And um, so I sat in the, the they didn't have the place for us yet and they let me, I asked if I could go in a control room and they're like, okay. And I sat in this control room because I love television. I love being behind the scenes. And the president was making a speech. It was Obama. He's making a speech, and I was in the live fucking in the room, the Fox News room, watching them do their thing. And Bill O'Reilly's on this camera having his hair done. And this guy's over here looking at, you know, and a girl's got, she's getting makeup. Everybody's getting ready. The president is in the corner. And the sound's off. Nobody's listening to the president. He's giving a speech and nobody's, they're just going, Alex, what do you got? Alex, and Alex is like, did you get the fucking guy? Everybody's cursing and trying to line up guests for interviews. And just, it was fascinating to watch. And the second the president is done, they go to whoever, not Alex Jones, what am I talking about? The guy who was the big Fox News guys back then, uh, Bill O'Reilly. Bill Bill O'Reilly, yeah. They go to Bill O'Reilly and he goes, well, this is just the president doing the same. Like, he wasn't listening. Nobody listened to the speech. They just go, this is just bullshit. And ah. We don't believe it. And then this guy and this guy. And I saw how fast and they were so urgent. It was so urgent that they get in right away. And I know that the same things happen in an MSNBC and CNN. They're not thinking about anything. They already know their reaction. Yeah. And they got to come in with it really quick because the, because it's got to get in here. Before anything else, it's got to, you know, so nobody listens to, if, if there was like a thing where you need to take a day after his speech, you have to read it, you have to watch it and discuss it with a staff and then make a decision, make a speech, you know, uh, uh, an opinion. The opinion would be like, he, he's got points and blah, blah, you know what I mean? It would yeah. definitely be, and it would move the ball forward and it would get people to hear each other more. But there's such a need because it's entertainment. Yeah. You have to be there right away with mm-hmm. a re- rebuttal. Yeah. Well, you know what it is, is like for it's entertainment disguised as news for minimally engaged casual viewers. Yeah. Because it's not really people that are completely locked in for the most not part. Not into it, no. Most just, people are just uh, flipping through the channels yeah. and you know something outrageous. Like, what I think he's doing is bad for America. Yeah. Oh, bad for America? What is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll tune in. But if they don't say that, you're not yeah. going to pay attention, and then they're going to lose out on those that Pfizer dollars that's going to no. come during the ad break. If you say what you really think, yeah, it would be like, well, if, you know, we'll see. Yeah. It should be fine. In other ways, it won't be, but it'll be. Nobody wants to watch that. So. Well, because of the format, it's just a trick to get you to watch a commercial for Colgate. It's just a trick. Well, that's it's the old trick. days. That's the it's, old days. It is now, too. Yeah. Like, if they can't get you to stick around and wait right. for the commercials, they don't make any money. No. Like, the whole deal is they have to be engaging enough to get you locked in so you can see that Toyota truck commercial. And if they don't, they don't make the money. No, that's the same with the little videos, too. Like, have you ever seen back when there was police shooting videos, black people that were coming up a lot, they'd always, some news organization would get it, it would be theirs, and you go on YouTube to watch it, and there's an ad. So it's like mm-hmm. Snapple, Yep. the guy gets beat up, and then Snapple again and, and at the wild? end. Yeah. yeah, and they make money off Snapple that. Snapple is like, yeah. So strange. The yeah. news is so bizarre. It's yeah, we, you a, get the what format so bizarre. We get what we want from it, though, because everybody likes to be entertained by news. So if there wasn't, it's like drug use. If there isn't the user, then the, then the well, dealer goes broke. Well, it's way less popular than it's ever been in yeah. human history. Like mm. in the history of television news, the news, uh, like the evening news and CNN, yeah. and those things, are less popular than they've ever been. Right. Ever. And it's because people are tired of it. It's a shitty format. And in comparison to long-form discussions like independent uh, uh, interview shows, like, uh, 
you know, there's so many different political shows now and podcasts where mm -hmm. people have nuanced perspectives. And if you really want to understand what's going on in the world, like complicated issues like the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, like you mm -hmm. need people to break it down to you yeah. and they're not going to get it in in five minutes. You're, no. you're not going to, you're going to get, they hate us for our freedom. That's what you're going to get in five minutes. Right. You're going to get nonsense talking points. Now, I remember when I grew up, like Walter Cronkite was still on the air somewhere. I remember he was on CBS, I think. Uh, I still, the, my earliest news memory yeah. was when Apollo and Soyuz, the two, uh, the Russian and the American capsule, uh, docked in mid-space. Mm. There was something where they were both up there once and they ran into each other and saw each other from the window and kind of got close and thought, hey, what if we could meet? So they went back and they fashioned a dock. This is like in the early 70s or mid 70s. And they went up and they and they docked and then they walked, they, they hung out and drank vodka. Anyway, it was, it was during the Cold War. It was a big deal. And I remember Walter Cronkite, I, I think this is what I remember. I could be wrong. But Walter Cronkite saying, if you live in the northeast of the United States, if you go outside tonight, if you look up, you'll see a red light and a white light blinking next to each other. And that's, and that's them uh, in orbit. And I went up and I fucking saw it and it just, I mean, it blew my mind. Wow. And the way he said it with a little bit of a smirk, like, isn't that cool? Because he was very stoic. But there was a thing back then where there was just him and David Brinkley. It was a couple of news yeah. organizations and then like PBS. And you kind of got a sense that they were on it, that they, and also that it wasn't fun. It was, they had ethics that they took years of training in college and school to get through and a, and a system of a hierarchy of whatever internships and that by the time you were running the network news you were you were a serious person that took it seriously yes. you know and i remember maybe in the mid 80s when i started to hear this sound from the news that i thought what are you what are you doing that and then sometimes it just sounded like this right and they're saying and i was like what are you fucking do? you were i could hear the bullshit yeah and i knew that they were but that back then they were just trying to make it sound interesting when it wasn't they didn't start having this opinion thing yet you know right but it became a show and now it's a show about opinions it's entertainment and like any other entertainment organization in america they ran it way past the finish. They went way past it. Nobody likes it anymore. And it's it, they're, they're, they're running it to the ground. They can't just, they don't know when to stop. Yeah. Well, that's the train they're on, right? Do you think Fox started it? Was it Fox that started this like aggressive sort of uh, opinion version of the news? Were they the first and then everybody else sort of had to respond to it? Maybe. I don't know. Fox I'm a, is the first I'm an to idiot. Put I don't know that. Hot ladies in short skirts. 